e o e e o e o e e o o e e e e o e e e e o o o o o o o o I think I can do a pretty good crazy laugh. I don't know. What do you guys think? <laughs> and this is by none the uh, definition of insanity, folks. I think I was trying to do that and it didn't work. Fuck it. Yo, what's up guys, the Insane Game Freak here. Um, let's talk to me three. Uh, Shokyo made a video, I guess you can call this a response video to it. Um, although it's a very weird response video because it's not a necessary agreement, but it's also not a necessary disagreement. Um, and yes, I understand that the, the course of the video was more talking to the people who view the video as, who view, who view E3 as completely irrelevant now versus the people who view this uh, view that has just gone down, downhill. Uh, but there's a few things I want to tend to talk about that kind of helps and hurts both sides. Okay, so first things first, he, he kind of, in the video, he's, he's more addressing those Nintendo fans who are kind of using the whole them saying fucking E3 for the most part as a dropout excuse. Like, pretty much, the people who are saying E3 is irrelevant, it's implied, heavily implied that a lot of those Nintendo fans who are saying that are the ones who are saying that just because of the whole Nintendo not putting NX stuff out of there. And obviously there's a lot of people who disagree with the, well, why wouldn't you put the NX out on an E3? That doesn't make any sense. That's a stupid idea. And, you know, all that other stuff. Here, here's my whole thing when it comes to E3 and when it comes to how relevant it is. Um, I do not, I am not a part of the group who believes it's irrelevant. Uh, I just don't feel like it's necessary, and there's a difference. E3 still has its importance, I just don't think it's as necessary as people think it is. Um, and I'll give my, a, a few reasons why. Here's the thing, to me, I never thought E3 by itself was interesting. What made it interesting was the companies that showed up to E3. Um, and, and to kind of illustrate my point, let me ask you Nintendo fans a question. For those who say Nintendo is your favorite, meaning the most interest you have in E3 usually comes from Nintendo because that's your favorite company because they make most of the games that you like the most. Does you, didn't your E3 hype kind of drop when you found out that the only game you were going to really be seeing much of is Zelda and, oh yeah, you're not even going to be seeing any NX news? Did your hype for E3 drop? If your answer is yes, then to me that says that it wasn't really about E3 in the first place. It was about the company coming to E3. Because realistically, if you think about it, if Sony and Microsoft and Nintendo decided to just do their own separate events away from E3, what, what are you excited about E3? The thing is that E3 over the years has been come to known as a conference or a gathering of where all the coolest news drops. Um... But you take that away, and that's the thing. I don't. That's why it's hard to say if E3 will stay relevant or not because it's going. Because I, I know some people said it's going downhill, but it's going downhill partially due to the fact that most people aren't. You know, you have Nintendo getting further and further away from E3, and even this year, more companies are getting further away from E3. Um, that doesn't make E3 relevant, but it also makes it kind of shows you the problem with these kind of to say whether E3 is relevant or not because E3 being relevant is based on the companies going to E3. If the companies don't go, then E3 will become irrelevant because why would I care about a game show, I mean, not a game show, a uh, a conference or various conferences from game companies I don't like. And actually, it'll become irrelevant to more and more people. So it's like, it's not shocking to hear Nintendo fans say E3 isn't relevant because they're not because the shit that they want to see the most isn't at E3. So it's one of those situations where it's like, I understand why people are saying it. I understand why Nintendo fans specifically are saying it's irrelevant. Because the shit that they want to see isn't going to be at E3. So of course to them, E3 has become irrelevant. Now to a Sony and Microsoft fan, it doesn't make any sense for them to say that. 
But for Nintendo fan, it makes perfect sense. The shit that I want to see isn't at E3. Therefore, E3 now to me is irrelevant. And I guess, and granted, I believe he's talking more in a grand scheme of things. But it's like I said before, the more people who get away from that, and it, and, the, and the thing is, is that maybe back in the day, e, honestly, E3 was more relevant. But nowadays, E3 is just an extension of the current modern gaming industry we're in. Most companies, if not all of them, are streaming, have their own Twitch streams, their own YouTube channels, their own Facebooks, their own Twitters, they have all their own ways of promoting their own material. They don't really need E3 as much. E3 was kind of like, for most gamers, in the, you know, a while back, was like the only way we could get information because the internet wasn't really fully evolved and we couldn't really just easily Google search Nintendo News or Sony News or Microsoft News or EA News or Bethesda News. We had the fucking E3 was like that. That was it. But realistically, if Nintendo start Space World shit again, and move all their stuff to that, E3 for me will become inherently irrelevant. And it will become irrelevant for more and more people. And considering the relevance of E3 is based on the amount of people who give a fuck about it, the more and more people who stop caring about E3 because their company of choice isn't going to E3 anymore or really pushing E3, because in retrospect, that makes Space World more relevant now then and it makes E3 less relevant because Nintendo has moved all their shit to that. It's it's one of the reasons why people I feel like people call Nintendo Directs as E3s, mini E3s because the company that you care about, one of them at least, is doing a presentation online that everyone can see. And that's one like the streaming in itself is the amount of social media and the ways to digest all this uh information has become so wide and vast. You don't really need E3. E3, half of E3's appeal is is the fact that it was able to get out a whole bunch of gaming information in a short amount of time. But now, as Nintendo and other companies have shown, and like, I think Microsoft is streamed last year and is streaming this year too, you don't fucking need a goddamn live conference to get out that information. You can easily drop an online trailer for the new Call of Duty and not put that in some fucking E3 presentation. Because everybody will hear new Call of Duty trailer. Because it'll be shared on Facebook and Twitter and Snapchat and whatever the fuck else. And they'll just gravitate towards it. You know, it's the same shit. That's why it's kind of hard for me to say it's it's relevant and not relevant. Uh, one of his points also was the fact that, you know, even the companies that are uh, going away from E3 are still putting their shit around E3. Well, I don't really view that as an E3 thing as much as I view that as a summer thing. What's the smartest day to put out a whole bunch of entertainment information? The summer. And why is that smart? Because a lot of the kids and a lot of your gamers are out of school and college during the summer. A lot of them are. So you're guaranteed to get way more viewership during the summer than you would be during like the fall or Christmas or any of that other shit because usually people are fucking busy. So it's like... Granted, yeah, it, that's kind of a smart thing for E3 and against E3. It's like, yeah, they get so much buzz because so many people have so much free time because it's during a period of time where more people have more free time because it's the fucking summer and everybody's out of school and whatnot. Um, so it's like, well, e, you know, EA got has their stuff near E3 and Nintendo will probably have their stuff near E3. Well, I'm like, no, that's just it being in the summer because summer is like one of the best times to announce a whole bunch of news. I also never understood why people call E3 Christmas for gamers when to me it really is more so literally what I would call the promised land. It's a land of promises, some that get fulfilled and some that don't. It's not really, it's Christmas maybe in terms of information. It's just not Christmas in terms of fucking games, like actual games I can play. Um, it's one of the reasons why I think Nintendo's been moving away from it, because they, I think they've, and granted, I don't think it's because they inherently don't like E3 anymore, but I think they're starting to learn, it's e it's becoming, it's so easy to get your shit out there nowadays, you don't need E3, E3 doesn't serve any higher purpose, it's the same thing, E3's purpose is, is less relevant, because what it does, anybody can do. Nintendo was a big enough name to push its own material, which is why Nintendo ended up trending. If you're in a direct that's coming in like the next week or so, that direct will be trending more and more as the days get closer to the direct, and then the direct will come out, and you'll just you'll be flooded with Nintendo news. 
I don't think that's always happened with Nintendo Directs. Well, what's different from a Nintendo Direct and having a live E3 press conference or even a digital event during E3, considering it, their shit gets pushed out regardless. Like, they're, like, you're, you're, now, nah, granted, the, the, the one thing E3 is really good at is kind of cross promotion. You know, people who don't give a fuck about everything in E3, because me personally, I only watch, like, the main three conferences. I watch Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo, and I just recently started watching Microsoft. But that's what I mean by cross-promotion. Most people will take off the week because it's like, well, I'm probably going to be looking at game footage and trailers all throughout the day, all throughout multiple days anyway. And then, oh, look, well, Microsoft has a conference going on. There's nothing, there's no more Nintendo stuff for a little while. I guess I'll watch that. It works for cross-promotion. But the hype and the build-up around E3 is based upon the fact that E3 itself has become synonymous with everybody coming in and talking about it's like everybody giving a goddamn digital event. It literally, or just an event in general. It's a confirmed event that everybody goes to. So, of course, people feel like that, you know, Nintendo not announcing their stuff there is a huge misstep. But we're in an age now where you don't need a, a platform like E3. I mean, YouTube is like one of the best examples. YouTube is, a, is one fucking website that allows you to share videos and make videos. I can, I can, I mean, hell, I have a video on my channel that's me literally eating a pizza and, and waiting for my sister to stop, for my sister's friend's baby from crying, and that shit has over 3,000 views. It's something as basic as that. And you're telling me a fucking multi-million dollar corporation needs this one event to show off something? They don't, which is why I understand why Nintendo fans are calling it irrelevant. Because you don't, E3 has, is, isn't needed anymore. You can use it. I mean, because if that's the case, and it's like saying, oh, well, that means nothing. Because to me, that's just saying that you can't get gaming information out or it won't reach a wide of an audience unless uh, you're at this E3 state. Like, to me, to say that E3 is still, and granted, it is still one of the biggest gaming conventions. So, I, like, when you call it irrelevant, you have to understand, this is why I say he's both right and wrong in his statement, because to, to say it's it's still relevant. Because it's relevant in the sense that it's still a big gaming event that everybody knows about, but it's also irrelevant in the sense that you don't, that it's not really necessary. I think that's my biggest disconnect where it's like, I don't really think E3 is necessary for companies anymore. I think Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo can, and I don't even understand why EA or Bethesda or even any other third party or Capcom have their own conferences. Why? Because most of their shit are co is coming out on one of those three consoles and PC and or PC anyway. So, like, we'll hear about it in the Sony conference. We'll hear about it in the... And I understand the appeal because I don't watch any of the third-party companies' uh, conferences because usually I hear about their shit anyway on the Sony side or the Microsoft side or the Nintendo side. Um... Because cause realistically, and, and when you think about it, your hype for E3 isn't even based on the in the event E3. It's based on the fact that you know your company of choice is going to be there. So it's like, am I excited because of E3's coming for Zelda footage, or am I excited for Zelda footage that Nintendo said they're going to come out with that just happens to be running during the E3 event? Well, that's how most people look at one. And now let me phrase that. Most people look at it as the E3 thing. But I look at it as, oh, God, Nintendo said they're going to put out Zelda Wii U slash NX footage. I want to see Zelda Wii U NX footage. If it happens to be an E3, and, and here's the thing, that shit would get hyped no matter where it is. So it's not an E3 thing, it's just a, my company of choice is doing something I want to see thing. It's why people do reaction videos to different events, like Tokyo Game Show or, all the, or, the, or the multiple Nintendo Directs or Gamescom. Because they don't give a damn what event the shit is at, they're just concerned where the shit is at. So it's like, that's why I'm kind of conflicted when I hear, is E3 relevant? Technically, yeah, it's still relevant because it's still a gaming event that everybody likes going to and people still present shit at. It's just not needed. That's the way I kind of view it. E3 isn't needed because everybody can kind of push their own shit. And people will get hyped regardless because if you're a Sony fan, you're going to be looking at the new Uncharted, the new Ratchet and Clank, the new God of War, the new Kill Zone. The new, I don't know, fucking, what, whatever the hell else comes to PlayStation. The new, uh, oh, what's it called? Horizon? Yeah. The new Horizon or the new thing for Quantic Dreams or some shit. You know, we'll be looking at that because Sony will have an event on it. Like, they ain't gonna, it don't matter if that shit's called E3 or the Sony Experience. 
like, or the PlayStation Experience. Same thing with Nintendo. I'm going to be looking for that new Mario, Zelda, Pokemon, Monster Hunter, whatever the fuck else. But I'm, I don't care if it says E3 or Nintendo, because I know the whole point is it's being shown. So that's what I mean. That's my whole thought process when it comes to this whole, is E3 relevant or not? I understand why Nintendo fans are saying it's not, because for them, it isn't. The only thing that they care about now is Zelda. And they don't, at a certain point, people gotta understand this, a disc, there, it isn't just a simple E3 is showing all this stuff. No, it's that your company of choice decided to go through this conference called E3 and present their shit at it. Which is what, so that's what, that's where my thought process is. I understand why people are calling it irrelevant. I just don't, but at the same time, it doesn't make it, it doesn't make the conference any less important currently. But people need to understand the importance of the conference hinges on the companies giving a fuck. Because if Sony and Microsoft and Nintendo just completely pull out of E3, how relevant is E3 now? E3 isn't relevant anymore, is it? Because the companies that most people give a damn about are gone. And yeah, maybe Capcom and EA and Bethesda and Naughty Dog and all those other companies are still there doing their shit. Maybe some indie people too. But most of those games are going to end up on those three consoles anyway. So literally, if you had the main three com console manufacturers pull out, is E3, is E3 still relevant? No, because it never was. You can make any event relevant. It just depends on who you get to come to the fucking show and present their shit. I mean, people will go, I mean, why do you think that happens with Pokemon shit now? There's, there's been this Pokemon TV show, not the anime, but there's like this Pokemon TV show that comes on around the same time as an anime. And people will tune into that because it was told that there will be some new Sun and Moon footage. That's what I mean. You can, any event can become relevant real quick if there's something I give a damn about coming on it. You know, people watch the Super Bowl if you hear there's a Pokemon ad coming out that may or may not be about Sun and Moon or, or something else, it's the same shit. So to me, this to call E3 relevant as a whole on an objective level, no, it's not objectively. But it is irrelevant if you don't give a damn about it. And as we know, majority rules. So if enough people don't give a damn, then it won't be relevant anymore. But that's just my thought process. Uh, please leave yours in the thought or in the comment section below. It's just kind of a thing. Where it's like, I understand why people call it irrelevant. I understand why people say it's still relevant. It's just something you kind of have to think about. Anyways, love the game. Play to win. And I will catch you guys later. Peace off.